My guest today is James Bob Haggerty, author of an extremely interesting new book called Yours Truly, an Obituary Writer's Guide to Telling Your Story. Bob has worked as a reporter and editor for more than 40 years for the Wall Street Journal, with postings in New York, London, Brussels, Hong Kong, and Atlanta. He's now based in Pittsburgh and is the journal's only full-time obituary writer telling life stories of people from around the world. And I think that's got to be extraordinarily interesting. Welcome, Bob. It's good talking with you. Thank you. Thanks for your interest. You know, I, you know the, I remember we started today's Caregiver Magazine, caregiver.com, about 27 years ago. And it was only about 22 years ago that I first saw the word family caregiver, the words family caregiver, in mm -hmm. an obituary. And that just caught my attention, that somebody felt enough about the, their loved one um, to use some of those highly prized you know, placements to make sure that the world knew she was a family caregiver. Right. We see more and more of that. Yeah, I remember. I never saw that 20, 30 years ago. And, but, you know, I think that that's, that's mm -hmm. uh, stuck with me. I tell that story all the time. So that person is famous in my life. Mm -hmm. But if you're not famous, if you don't have a public name, um, why should you tell your life story? What's happening here and who's going to care? Well, one thing I tell people is that uh, sooner or later, your story is going to be told in some fashion. Um, and the only question is whether it's going to be well told or badly told. <laughs> uh, you know, what usually happens when ordinary people die is that uh, their families uh who are you know full of grief and all kinds of uh, disruption in their life uh, are told by the funeral director that they have to supply some information for an obituary. And so a very quick uh, bit of writing is done. Uh, usually uh, you've got a few names and dates and maybe a few uh, sentimental thoughts, uh, a list of survivors, and that's about it. Um, and some people may think that's enough, but to me, it's not nearly enough because I want to know something about the personality. I want to know what that person was trying to do with his or her life and, and how it worked out and, and what what he or she thought about it, what kind of lessons they learned. Well, this is a great idea. Um, when should I do this? Uh, immediately. <laughs> uh, I mean, my, my, know something I don't know. Yeah, my thought is, you know, this is something that, I don't think people should think about it as writing their obituary. Obituary is a confusing word. People will just think, oh, that means just this little thing that's going to be in the back of the newspaper or on a website. I think people should just think about, at any age, preserving memories of things that happened to them. Uh, so when you're 15 or 20 or 25 or 30, whenever, uh, try to write down some of these things that happened to you. Um, one way to do it is just to uh, write a letter to somebody. If you don't like writing letters, not too popular anymore, you can write an, send an email or a text or put something on social media, but then keep a copy for yourself and collect these things uh, so that at least uh, at the end of your life, uh, when people want to know more about you, they, they can get something directly from you, you know, rather than something secondhand from people who kind of only half remember what you told them. What if somebody doesn't like to write? Well, that's a problem because a lot of people don't like to write. Um, one thing you can do is you can record things. Uh, or you can tell somebody else and ask them to help you write it down. Or you can just sit down and write it in your own way and don't worry about whether you've got the words spelled right or you're making grammatical mistakes. or You don't have to worry about any kind of literary quality. Just jot a few things down in your own voice. It's kind you know, of you, what you want to be remembered for, the kind of person you want to be remembered for, things in your life. What what, what do you what do you what do you put in? Well I would start with uh you know some of the basics for one thing is you know where when you were born and where you grew up and what your parents did for a living and uh how you figured out what you wanted to do with your life and how you met your spouse if you met one or you know all of these things that happened to you uh, not just that they happened but but how and why they happened 
I think those things are interesting. And I think, you know, your children and your friends and maybe your grandchildren, your great grandchildren may well like to know some of that one of these days. Okay. I, certainly, I would certainly like to know more about my dad's life. Yeah, I, I, I believe that too. I, I, when my dad passed in uh, 91 and, and I was a video producer and I kept thinking I need to sit down with the camera and put it in front of him and tell his stories. But my, I always felt like he'd, he'd feel like, well, they know I'm dying. <laughs> right. But I think I missed an opportunity there. I think that's a really good um, opportunity for someone to tell their story, share their story and tell their loved ones who they are while they're still living. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I missed an opportunity with my dad. Uh, my dad was somebody who never seemed really interested in talking about the past. Um, and he, if you ask him a question, he'd give you a really short answer. Um, but I should have tried a little bit harder. Um, I'm thinking with him, and the good thing would have been to go out to a bar, have a couple of drinks, and that might have opened him up a little bit. So that Everybody's different. Fine. That's not going to work with everybody. But it probably would have worked with my dad. It would work. You got to find people in the right mood. You don't want to do it all at once. And you don't have to announce it as a project. Just, just say, you know, Dad, tell me about uh, why you decided to become a journalist. Where'd you get that idea? And how did you get your first job? So yeah. the family can get involved in this and at the same time learn something about the person that, that they, they love that they may not have even known. Right. That's great. What what um, tips and techniques and tricks do you have in the book for us? Well, one of them is just to start early on your own and also start early talking to the people who matter in your life and you want to know more about them. Help them. Uh Another idea is to take your family photos and annotate them. You know, if you look at family photos from 40, 50 years ago, they're interesting, but you're wondering, well, who's that? You know, where were they? And you know, what was what was going on that day? You know, if you took your fa some of your favorite pictures and you just wrote a few sentences about what this picture means to you, what was happening that day, who are these people? Uh, that could be really interesting. And that, that's something that's not too difficult to do. You know, as the Wall Street Journal's obituary writer, I just have a few questions. I don't know, don't tell me if it's tricks of the trade, but how far in advance are you writing these public uh, obituaries of public people? Well, they're not always in advance. Uh, for for people who are really famous, we do try to have something ready, uh, and that can be decades in advance sometimes, because uh, you don't know when you have to write it. Uh, we should start early. Um, and we probably have a few hundred of those on hand. Uh, the New York Times probably has a few thousand of them. Uh, they're very diligent about it. Um, and those are a great idea, I think, because uh, I often write obituaries about people who, who have never been interviewed. And it's very frustrating to, um, to try to rely on secondhand sources because their children and their friends, they only half remember things. And they give you kind of vague stories uh you know that there's a better story there uh, so when, when the first thing i do when i started an obituary of somebody is i ask the family uh did he write anything about his life or record anything and surprising surprising that quite a few people have in one form or another uh others have not uh, i'm often told oh you know he was much too modest for anything like that uh but that's the wrong idea to me. I don't think it's uh, a sign of conceit or vanity if you have written down your story. Mm -hmm. I think you, you, what you've done is you've prepared a, maybe the greatest gift you will ever give to your family and friends. I, I think you're so. also giving a gift to yourself because when you sit down and think about your life and what's happened to you and why uh, at any stage uh, and preferably at a fairly young age, that's a good time for you to reflect on whether you really are on the right path. And it might not be too late for you to improve the narrative. What's the essence of what you try to put in a, a professional obituary that can and should be shared with family members about the the feeling, how how much feeling, how much fact? You know, where do, where does that where does that is there a balance? Uh well the the three questions I try to think about just very basically on any life is, 
what was he or she trying to achieve in life and why? And then how did that turn out? That gives me sort of a, a basic uh, framework to start with. And then I have, just have all kinds of questions about, uh, you know, who, what, and where, and especially why. Um, and I like the, I like to find out the, the funny things that happened uh, because uh, those things often, uh, not only are they, do they uh, make something more fun to read and sort of relieve uh, the pain of loss, but uh, they also provide some clues into the personality. That's true. How long do you suggest we make this obituary? You know, it could be a few sentences or it could be as long as a whole book. <laughs> you know, it's up to you. Um, you know, I've, I've started writing my story and uh, it's way, way too long. I've probably written 50,000 words uh, and I'm only up to age 50 or something. Um, but I'll go through that and I'll cut out some of the stuff that seems boring. And uh, um, I'll also, you know, I kind of think, well, anything that I find interesting, you know, it's possible my kids will find it interesting or my friends or my grandchildren. Um, and if, if they're bored by parts of it, they can just skip over that. And are we all- Most people are not going to write a book. Oh, well, no, but, but are you- can, You can if you want to. You know, anybody could. Uh, most people's stories are complicated enough so that there'd be material for a book. It's not going to be a bestseller, probably, but it's going to be a comfort and a joy for somebody. And and also we're talking about uh, preparing the information for the obituary writer in the local paper. Or do you have any tips about that? Exactly. That's an important thing. Uh, I, I tell people they should really prepare two things. One thing would be short uh, and it would be written to be put in the local newspaper or on a website or in a, a funeral service program or all of those. Uh, and that probably is not going to be more than a few hundred words, but they should be well-chosen words, you know, not just a bunch of generalities and flowery language. They should really tell, some, tell us something about the person. Um, and then for families and close friends, I would write more. That's, that's really, you know, it's really nice. It, it's it's being able to share yourself with the public and the community that you live in, but mm -hmm. also share yourself in private with those you leave behind who loved you. I think that's, okay. this is a really important book and I really appreciate you you writing it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, we're going to have, oh, well, wait, before I, I'll cut that out because you know I can edit. <laughs> okay. I always tell people I can edit. Don't worry what you say. And then I always goof up. <laughs> um, right. How do people get the book? Well, you can order it any on any website. Uh, it should be in bookstores starting December 27th. Uh, I hope it will be widely available. It's been mentioned by the Washington Post as a noteworthy book published this month. So I hope bookstores will read that and stock up. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for sharing your um, skill set with us. All right. Well, thank you so much for your interest. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for uh, supporting caregivers. They need it.